This video is not for kids. This may contain cussing, suggestive themes, and or triggering topics. Anything said in this video is alleged and not to be taken seriously. This video nor channel does not promote or encourage illegal activities. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is as use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. And warning again, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Hello all, welcome to my Patreon. In this Truth Seeker requested video, I will be talking about the death and crime of television host, son, John Wash. His name is Adam Wash. What really happened? Now I know some of you may not know who the heck John Wash is. Well, let me give you a brief intro. John Wash is a TV host of the famous show America Most Wanted. However, during the premiere of the show, John shared the story of the kidnapping of his son. He was quoted as saying this about the corpse of his son. People don't know this, but police kept Adam's severed head in the morgue for 27 years, saying you can't bury your child because it's an open capital murder said wash we can never get adam's remains while the case was botched that's what he said adam john wash was born on november 14 1974 in hollywood california to john wash and rev wash it was a typical afternoon on july 27 1981 when rev adam's mother took him shopping to the Hollywood Mall in Hollywood, California. They eventually ended up in Sears, which is one of my favorite places to shop for appliances, by the way. Anyway, Rev quickly went to inquire about a lamp. That so happened to be on sale. While leaving Adam at the kiosk to play video games, which was a norm with many parents at this time. Heck, now too. Besides, there were many other young boys there playing games as well. After Rev completed, her purchase around 12 15 p.m. Upon returning, she find that Adam and the other boys were gone. So she asked the store manager what happened. The store manager told her that a scuffle had broken out over the games, you know, boys and video games. So he told the security guard to kick them out of the store. Upon asking the security guard what happened, he said he asked the older boys if their parents were there. Why ask the older boys and not the younger boys? Okay. Anyway, they said that they were not. It was told that, you know, from Rev and John that Adam would have been too shy to speak to the security guard anyway, who assumed that he was in the company of the other boys and made them all leave out the west entrance. So, of course, the other boys went their separate ways. Adam was left alone to wonder. Rev decided to check the toy department, no answer. So then she had him page over the public address system while continuing to look for him throughout the store. Coincidentally, she ran into John's mother, Jean, who helped her search for him as well. But after 90 minutes of searching and many public address pages, she called the Hollywood Police Department at around 1.55 p.m. After many dead ends, and remember this was in the 80s, so the technology wasn't as great as it is now. So after some time, the police eventually concluded that Adam may have been abducted by drifter Otis Elwood Tula, who was an American drifter and serial killer, who was convicted of six counts of murder, while he was out, I have no idea, like his companion, Henry Lee Lucas Tool, made confessions he then later recanted, of course, which resulted in murder convictions. Apparently, the security guard had instructed Otis to leave earlier while he was hanging out near their front entrance. It was reported later that Twill allegedly lured Adam into his white 1971 Cadillac with promises of toys and candy, and then proceeded to drive north on the Interstate 95 toward his home in Jacksonville. Adam at first started to complain and began to panic as they drove. 
So Tool said he punched him in the face, but things had gotten worse, so he knocked him unconscious. Actually thinking he killed them. So Tool drove north on the Florida Turnpike to a deserted service road just north of the Radbog Road overpass in northwest St. Lucia County. But Tool realized Adam was still breathing. So he strangled him to death with his seatbelt and then dragged him out of the car and decapitated him with a machete. He later said that he had disposed of his body by incinerating it in an old refrigerator when he returned to Jacksonville. He later claimed that he wanted to make him his adopted son. But considering the close relationship Adam had with his loving parents, that wasn't very feasible. Not to mention the amount of blood that was found in his car. However, conveniently, the police had lost the blood-stained carpet from Otis' car and the machete that was used to decapitate Adam. And eventually, the car itself, oh yes. Meanwhile, Tool and his confidant and convicted serial killer, Henry Lee Lucas, repeatedly confessed and then retracted accounts of this involvement. Oh, and get this, Tool was never charged for the kidnapping and killing of Adam even though he provided seemingly accurate descriptions as to how he committed the crime. I guess they figured he was lying. Oh, I'm not done yet. Several witnesses had also placed him in the Hollywood area in the days leading up to Adam's disappearance. Otis later died in prison. On September 1996, he was 49 years old, of cirrhosis while serving a life sentence for other crimes. But get this, later his niece told John Wash that Otis had made a deathbed confession to Adam's murder. Yet again. Oh yes. Oh, I'm still not done yet. Otis' confession was viewed as unreliable since Lucas is sidekick and he confessed to or implicated themselves for more than 200 different homicides, making the cops look bad, you see. So they label most of Lucas' confessions as false. You know, you know, the Texas Rangers didn't like that. Meaning the police persuaded them with threats and so on to confess to the murders. That's what they said. The reason why they confessed because they were forced to confess to that and other murderers. Even though they retracted that they even confessed or done it. Yeah. But get this. 16 years later, since the murder of Adam Washington, police chief had conducted a review of Adam's case. After, you know, countless hours of listening to Tool and Lucas's confessions, he said the Tool did in fact murder him beyond a reasonable doubt. They were known to be very notorious in their day. That's what he said. Tool and Lucas confessed to Adam's murder and many others. It was like he wanted to be stopped. That's what they were um, analyzing. They were trying to say Jeffrey Dahmer may have been um, a suspect as well. But Jeffrey Dahmer repeatedly admitted this upon them getting him to confess to Adam's murder. I've told you everything, how I killed them, how I cooked them, who I ate, why wouldn't I tell you if I did someone else? And there was no evidence to charge Dahmer with it. So many years later, he in 2008, they finally decided to file Tool as a murder in this case, and the case was closed. Meanwhile, this case made the station and John Wash millions of dollars from the publicity this case had received. In the midst of this case, it didn't stop John and his wife, Rev, from having kids because they had a child not even a year later and then two or more thereafter. They're still married and live in marital bliss in their old ages. However, here is what I think. I believe that the cops knew Tool had killed Adam, but they were afraid of a lawsuit and their jobs for allowing this sick man loose to kill over 200 people. That would have made them really look bad. So instead of justice, they tried to cover it up. Although I read in some theories that John Walsh had sacrificed his son for the success of the show, his son was given as a sacrifice. Well, you know, Satan's demons. Oh, please note that these demons do have demonic vessels on earth to take these sacrifices and they come in all shapes, professions, races, and genders. Well, that's it. Tell me your theories below. Also, please, if you know anything about any missing children or more, call the number on the screen and be safe. And if you have to put your kids on a leash while you go shopping, please do so. 
at least they will be safe good luck and be safe on that note don't forget again to subscribe to my other channels and my other platforms i do appreciate your support if this is on my patreon or my truth show whichever or i just want to cover all my avenues <laughs> love you all bye Here's a brief word from my sponsor. The world's falling apart. Every day another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring. That's why those who know what's coming are using today to prepare. I'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is a nation's leading preparedness company. They've been in business for going on 14 years now and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kit. Oh, yes. You get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait. Go to prepare with my link with the truth and claim your four-week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com. Don't wait.